Hello, hello guys, International Master Andrei Ostrovsky is here with the next episode of Learn From Chess Please, the show uh, for those who want to improve uh, his chess while playing against me. So this show gives you such an opportunity. This time I'm going to attack you, I'm going to play some aggressive chess. So be ready uh, to be under pressure in each and every game. If you're for the first time here, I'm playing on elitechess.org. You can find me there by my nickname, Mostrovsky. Uh, so the spelling is just like in the short link here below leading to my YouTube channel. It is bit.ly slash Mostrovsky. So this Mostrovsky is exactly my nickname on elitechess.org. Um, so I'm really happy to see so many people already uh, here on live chat. So crowning student Artur Navrovsky, Fuxia, Zweihog Zax, Paul, uh, and other guys, so welcome. Uh, I'm so happy you're here already. So uh, I can see only one challenge at the moment. So guys, please uh, come and challenge me on Lee Chess for a five minutes Blitz game. Uh, you can also uh, challenge me for three plus two, also an interest in time control. So uh, the idea is not to win each and every game, but to share my experience, to explain the things happening on the board. Uh, that's why I'm playing slightly longer uh, Blitz games if compared to uh, the situation when I play uh, on my own for me personally. So I prefer three minutes, but for this show, five minutes is a great uh, choice. Okay. Um, great. Still early, says Paul. All right. Good evening, Twy Hozex. Yeah, guys, let's start playing. So. As I already said, uh, here is only one challenge so far. It is from Chronic Students, so I just accept uh, this challenge and we start the things. Start the madness, as Chronic Students said before. All right, so let's play open game. It's a great one for uh, attacking chess. C5, and I will try knight to C3 with the F4 next move. So. My idea is to try Grand Prix attack or something like that. So the point is usually to prepare f5 as soon as possible. Um, after e6, there is a question where to put my bishop, uh, because usually uh, the good square for the bishop is c4. b5 is also a possibility. So bishop to c4, then uh, something like knight to e7. Uh, maybe plate, I don't know, uh, preparing d5, but okay, let's see. So let's put the bishop on c4. <clears throat> Giovanni is also here. Uh, hello, my friend. And g6. Okay. So let's castle. And f5 right now, or what? Yeah, let's try, why not? We're playing aggressive chess, right? So the idea is to sacrifice the pawn, uh, but to open up files, diagonals uh, for my other pieces uh, to get to f7 eventually. That is my main target. So knight to e7. Okay. d5 is more or less ready. More or less. Should be careful. I can probably just take on e6 now. And then knight to g5 looks like an option. Let's try it. <clears throat> in this case, I somehow get to f7 and e6 squares almost immediately without much without much problems, I guess. So already the attack, f7, e6 are under pressure. So now I can win probably some material if I want. So if I start with the knight f7, attacking the queen, queen goes away somewhere. I can take on h8, and if it takes c4, my knight goes back to f7. I think it looks great for white. Ed5, ed5, inclusion of these moves can help me a bit, but it can also help black develop the bishop, so maybe it makes sense for me to avoid it. So let's start with the knight f7. I think it's a great move anyway. Attacking the queen. Queen to c7. But now I can even add my knight to b5. Wow, queen c7, I didn't expect that. So I expect a queen to b6 or something. Yeah, I guess knight b5. Inclusion of the knight b5 will be decisive. 
with the idea of knight d6 at some point. Uh, it looks great. Let's go. <clears throat> Just in the spirit of attacking chess, why not? So now let's take the rook. And there is an additional threat of playing knight to d6 next move. So I got too many uh, attacking possibilities in this game. Right from the start. Alright, now if I play knight d6 check, king goes to d7, knight goes to f7 attacking the bishop, bishop goes to d4 with check, and then my bishop on c4 will be captured. So maybe now it's time to calm down a bit and uh, go away with the bishop uh, to save the guy on the board at least. I think, yeah, why not? Bishop e2. Oh, there is c4. Wow. Maybe Kremlin student just tricked me. That was probably a trick. So maybe knight d6, knight c8 should be played to avoid these complications. Because, yeah, if I... Yeah, if I just play bishop e2, there is c4 check and taking my knight. All right, let's go there. <clears throat> so definitely king d7, only move. And now, unfortunately, I think I have to take on c8. I'd be happy just to go back with the bishop, but king d6 then. All right, so let's take this one with the temple. And I will probably just capture on d5 first, and then bishop to e2, and I will have extra exchange. Extra exchange. Maybe some additional possibilities of playing queen g4 now. Well, can be played, but then king c7, and what? I'm underdeveloped, so I would prefer just going, going away with the bishop. So pair of bishops, extra exchange. Uh, once I complete my development, I will be absolutely winning. That's the thing. <clears throat> A rook here. All right, so let's play this. Simple move, preparing bishop to f4. Knight to f5. All right, now I guess bishop to g4 deserves attention. Improving position of the bishop and attacking the knight on f5. <clears throat> if king goes to c7, I have bishop f4. That was, by the way, the idea behind d3 move. And guys, I can't see challenges from you. Come on, what is going on? What is going on? Feels like there are a lot of people already on Leechess, but no one wants to play? Or what, what, what's, what's the reason? Why don't you challenge me for a game? Huh? Let's bring another bishop to the game. Aggressive play. So bishop b2 then just rook to b1, okay. I lose the pawn, but I open up the b file for attack. Additional attack and resource. I guess it's fine. <laughs> That's why X says, don't worry, maestro, a challenge will come. Thank you. <clears throat> I have some problems with the voice today, don't know why. Feels like I'm not ill, but there is something wrong with that. Okay, so there is the question what to do with the center, to play c4 or to play c3, just limiting the activity of that bishop and so on, you know. All right, one more pawn isn't probably uh, that bad to capture, just because my bishop pins the knight f5, right? That was probably another trick. All right, now I have some problems with my king. Okay. Probably have to do this, which is probably not that great because there is not a g3 resource now. Yeah, don't like it anymore. Don't like it anymore. So what to do now? Let's try something like this. 
<clears throat> another super aggressive move. I'm playing a big crazy chess now. Yeah, there's bishop d4. Oh my god. I'm just misplaying it. Yeah, probably taking on h6 was stupid. I should have captured on e7 instead. At least it looks fine. Fun, I wanted to say. It no longer looks fine for white, I guess. There are definitely some problems. <clears throat> Fortunately, there is no um, Rook of eight or something. So let's go here. And take the Rook. I'm almost checkmated here, but... Yeah, I am. I am checkmated. Wow. Kremlin student is super tricky, so he played h6 on purpose. Really cool. Really, really cool. Oh, there was checkmate in two, in fact. There was checkmate in two. <clears throat> in three, okay. There was checkmate in three. Yeah, but anyway, I lost. Uh, there was checkmate in three here, by the way. Uh, so here, after king two, yeah, after I took the rook, queen f two here, just knight f one check first. Uh, just a second, I will activate analysis board. Congratulations, Kramnik students, it was a great game. Well, not right from the start uh, because you had a lost position, but somewhere after h six, you started playing like a bit. So here, knight to f one, and goodbye. Because if king goes to h1, there is queen g1 checkmate immediately. If I take on f1, then you have bishop b5 check. Super nasty one. I can't play g3. I can't play king to g1. I can only play king to h1 and queen f1 checkmate. It's over. It's over. Just uh, checkmate in three, right? Knight f1, bishop b5, queen f1. Wow, fantastic game, fantastic game. So what I did wrong, what did I uh, play uh, without much calculation was taking on h6, but h6 was played on purpose, very good resource. Instead of doing that, of course, I should have captured on e7 and then captured on f5 with the absolutely winning position. So um, there is very important thing, you have to be flexible, you just have to be flexible. Um, I mean, even if you start playing something like crazy chess, super attacking, super aggressive chess, at some point, when you have already a decisive advantage, you should just stop playing this stupid aggressive chess and uh, start playing uh, normal moves. So bishop e7 was absolutely uh, acceptable with uh, capture and f5 next move, or just playing something like, uh, for example, queen to f3 first, and then taking on f5 at a proper moment. So white simply has... <clears throat> decisive material advantage. Why should White uh, continue playing this uh, super aggressive chess? I don't know. Have no idea. As for the opening stage, I'm not sure that uh, it is a good idea to play e6 and then g6. In my opinion, it's better to start with the g6 and then uh, bishop g7 and knight to f6 even. So I like, for example, this uh, method of playing it. So castles, let's say knight to f6 or something. And you avoid this uh, complications um, uh, based on f5 possibility because if there is no pawn on e6, f5 isn't that isn't that um, um, efficient for white. e5 doesn't work here, by the way, because of this simple tactics: knight takes e5, knight e5, and queen to d4 check, then taking on e5. White has no compensation. 
Um, so white usually starts with something like d3 here and then castles. So still e5 doesn't work. And if king h1 or something, or uh, I don't know, uh, then there is a possibility to play knight to d4. So black starts normal Sicilian play, uh, having everything uh, okay with the king and so forth. All right. <clears throat> Hate comments come up. Uh, what do you mean, Kramnikson? Where are hate comments? So, and Fuxia says, Andre, you might need a mode. Yeah, most likely I will think about it. And yeah, that's why Jose says, we already know a good one, Fuxia. <laughs> okay, I can see, I can see the one uh, here. John, uh, why do you do this? Please tell me. Uh, can you please behave normally or I will ban you, okay? Um, all right, so let's keep on playing. Uh, I can't see challenges. So on Lee Chess, uh, to have a game against me, you just uh, create a challenge and then you are just waiting uh, and that's how it works. So you need uh, basically just some sort of patience. <laughs> and uh, I have this uh, challenges collected here and then I will just accept it at some point. Okay, I can see another one. Uh, this is actually uh, four um, twos. <laughs> so let's accept it. Here we go. E4. C5. So let's keep on playing aggressive chess. Sicilian is uh, a good option uh, of playing aggressively, usually. Okay, knight to c3. Let's play a6 first. And we have a transposition. Transposition to one of the uh, famous lines. And bishop to b7, creating a sort of b4, grabbing the central pawn already. <clears throat> so some guys just leave their challenges and then somehow just close uh, probably the uh, game windows. That's the thing. a3, preventing b4. But I can play b4 anyway if I want to actually develop my pieces quickly here. I can also consider knight to f6 move attacking e4. But I usually like to start with queen to c7, controlling e5 square, because after that knight f6 looks uh, much safer, because there is no e5 whatsoever. And uh, at the same time, my queen already exerts some slight pressure on h2, which may lead to attack in some lines. Bishop goes to e3, okay. So now knight f6, right? Now knight goes to f6, attacking e4. f3, okay. This may be considered as an achievement, I guess, already. Because instead of uh, making developing moves, white protects his pawn with the pawn. Usually white tries to play f4 in these positions, but the pawn is on f3, as we can see, which is good. I can't play bishop to d6, I think, attacking h2 here, because if knight takes b5, simple tactical shot, <clears throat> and then takes on d6, so probably I can consider d5 here. Super ambitious, super aggressive, probably just in the spirit of uh, what we do today. Yeah, let's play d5. Creating a concrete threat of just taking on e4. <clears throat> and grabbing the space in the center mainly.
castles. Given their chance to take on e4, but in this case, I feel like not really developed. <laughs> so it may be um, potentially very dangerous. So maybe bishop d6 instead. But if I play bishop d6, there is a trick like f4. By the way, I have a possibility just to play e5 now. And if that goes away somewhere, I can play d4. So probably e5 provokes knight takes b5, a b5, bishop to b5, or knight to b5 even. So sacrificing the piece. But I'm not sure that uh, what will have a sufficient compensation there. So let's try e5. Uh, Gandalf Gray joined and says, Hi Andre, thanks for your informative streams. I really enjoy them. You're welcome, my friends. I'm happy to help. So e5, intending to play d4. Next move. All right, so this is more or less forced. Otherwise, I just win the piece on d4. Mm, don't know. Let's take. Knight takes b5. Now I should be careful. It's important to find a good square for a queen. Um, which one is good? I guess it makes sense for me to save the queen on the c file because I have a possibility of playing bishop to c5 then, exchanging that bishop. And that bishop looks annoying a bit. On the other hand, queen d7 looks also like very natural square for a queen. Hmm, which one is better? No idea. Both look playable. What I definitely don't want to do is sound like queen c6 because after that e d5, knight d5, queen d5, queen d5, knight c7 leads to, leads to what? To just a simplification, in fact. So maybe even queen c6 is okay. Yeah, let's try queen c6. I think it's it's good. Or maybe not. <laughs> not that great. All right. Have no idea. Let's play this. Knight e6 is impossible because if bishop takes d6, so it's fine. Marcin came. Hello. So why can get three pawns, I think. Well, after bishop b6, I guess I should play this. Bishop c5. Check. And here's potentially a trick. So if king goes to h1, I can't take the bishop because of knight d6. But my opponent decided to take, which is great for me. Because <clears throat> now my position should be just absolutely winning. I just castle and I have extra minor piece. And there is no compensation. I mean, only two pawns, but it's not enough. Well, they are connected three here on the queen side, but still, I guess. Should be should be winning for black. What about uh, playing this move? You can probably hear my son Mark on the background now. Because it, he is quite loud. So e d5, knight takes d5, c4, knight to e3, c5, queen to g6. Little sneaky trick. Attacking the queen and g2 at the same time, the threat of a checkmate there. The white doesn't take on d5, alright. I will play d4 maybe. Or maybe d takes e4, it depends. Uh, yeah, let's take. So now I have a shred of playing knight to e3. There is also a good square on f4 for my knight. 
Can I challenge? Of course you can. Just go to League Chess. Find me by nickname Mostrovsky and challenge for a five minute game. That is the point behind the show. I'm just playing against viewers. That's the thing. So knight f4 attacking the queen and the bishop simultaneously. And maybe intending to bring my queen to g6, attacking g2. So white is in trouble. White is in trouble for sure. There is also a possibility just to do this. Knight e2 and bishop to a6. So learning from the previous game where I continued player playing like in a very aggressive style when it was no longer needed. So let's improve. <laughs> Let us improve. Okay, knight to d4, bishop b5 first, you know, knight to d4. Takes, takes. Takes. Yeah. Okay, so interesting game, but I think white missed several tactical opportunities somewhere in the opening. So let's start with this position. I will come back to the uh, better order of moves for white. Uh, let's talk about this d5. All right, d5 castles and uh, e5 now wins a piece for sure. Mm, maybe white has some compensation, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. So it was better to prevent that by taking on d5 here. So uh, just taking here, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Okay, uh, this is like, uh, well, probably an achievement for black because black has great uh, central bishop now controlling c4 square. And, uh, well, white center no longer looks that safe because uh, there are a lot of pieces in the center, no questions, but no pawns anymore. And I can potentially attack this knight on d4. So sooner or later, I will come up with this e5 idea. Uh, but in my opinion, this position still looks absolutely playable since black is underdeveloped. So white can uh, probably come up with some sort of, uh, well, quick play in the center, uh, preparing something like c4. Maybe f4, f5 deserves attention here. So in any case, I do believe this was white's best try, white's best chance. So uh, we can notice this pawns can be potentially vulnerable. So there are some positional ideas, including a4 as well. So this is the first moment. So after castling, I played e5, already winning some material, I guess, <clears throat> because knight to d5 doesn't help. Uh, it is a tempo move, but I take on d5 with the knight also with the tempo attacking the bishop and after ed5, ed4, and uh, queen to d4, well, I'm still uh, up a piece. And uh, well, I can probably just play knight to d7 here. Looks like a very safe move uh, with the threat of bishop to c5. Uh, my bishop also controls d6, so there is no d6. I can play queen e5 if I want. I can even cast a lawn here. I guess it's absolutely the safe thing. But th the main idea is just to get rid of uh, dark squared bishops first to weaken dark squares uh, all over the board and so forth. So extra minor piece, piece is extra minor piece after all. Okay, so knight d5 uh, takes, takes. Queen goes to c8, so probably not the best square. I mean, queen to d7 was probably better. Because in this case, after queen d7, and say bishop to b6, a very simple move like knight to a6 covering everything. And uh, well, looks absolutely safe. Again, I have the idea of just playing bishop to c5. Next move should be just winning. Um, yeah, probably I don't probably I don't uh, miss anything tactically here. All right, I play queen to c8. Bishop b6 was an interesting try, creating sort of knight c7. After bishop c5, I thought white would play something like king to h1. With a trick, because if I take the bishop, there is knight to d6 attacking both my king and my queen. And, um, well, of course, I'm not forced to take the bishop here. Most likely, I would have castled simply. Um, but still, it was better than just taking on c5 for sure, because this actually uh, brings my queen to the game uh, without problems. All right. So now there are some things connect with knight to c7 maybe, but in this case, I think I take here and after knight a8, I take here and I have three minor pieces to compensate the rook, I think is also winning for black. All right, but it was a nice trick after all. So after bishop c5 and queen to c5, I think it's lost for white for sure, okay? As for normal order of moves, um, if you play this knight to c3, 
uh, after a6. Uh, deserves attention. Okay, d4 can't be a bad move, but after ed4, knight e4, and b5, I guess it's better to put the bishop on d3. Uh, so just preventing anything connected with this uh, b4 and so on. Because if you play a bishop to d3 and I play b4, okay, your knight simply goes to e2 and then goes to g3. Uh, in this case, you don't even need to think of playing a3 or something. And after bishop d3, as we may notice, your pawn is already protected. So everything is just fine. That's my uh, idea and uh, my recommendation. And I can notice that uh, Kramnik student super chatted me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, you guys can do the same if you want. Uh, so if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, uh, you can support me a bit financially. So there are different options. And one of them is this super chat. So uh, where you uh, actually type your comments, there is also the sign of a dollar. And if you uh, press this dollar, you can just uh, send me some bucks. All right. Uh, and um, uh, unfortunately, you can do this only on desktop, I guess. So in any case, uh, let's have a look what is going on on chat here. Uh, MGTOW is here. Okay. Giovanni is still here. That's great. So thank you guys. And I can see a lot of challenges already. So let's uh, cut off the bullshit and uh, play. All right. Um, whom to play? Let's play to Mr. Sengupta. And I'm playing with black. Okay. E4. Let's continue playing Sicilian. Super aggressive opening. And bishop to e3. Okay. <clears throat> so my favorite move in this position is actually bishop to d3. I mean, when I play with white. Bishop to e3. Can I use this somehow? I guess I can start with knight to f6, attacking e4. Now maybe bishop to b4. Because if compared to knight f6, knight c3 and bishop b4, I mean without playing a6 move, here I have kind of extra move made and it's probably a useful move controlling b5 square. In many lines, it prevents white from occupying the square with the knight and so forth. Well, I'm not sure it is the greatest opportunity for me, but let's try. Let's Let's have a look at this. This may be interesting possibility. And bishop on e3 is not necessarily that perfectly placed in this case. I mean, if I play something like e5 now, I can probably play knight to d5, kind of attacking the bishop and exerting pressure knight c3. And if bishop goes to d2, well, it's just a transposition to that line with the inclusion of the a6. Okay, queen to d3 instead. Protecting e4, <coughs> protecting the knight on c3. Now, if I take on c3, I force damage of the pawn structure, which might be a good thing for me, but I prefer development. I want to bring the other piece to the game, creating potentially a threat of knight to e5, attacking that queen. For example, now, knight to e5 deserves serious attention. Uh, intermediate move prior to capturing on e4. So let's try it. This looks very logical. And the queen goes away, I can take on e4 after taking on c3, I guess. So where to go with the queen? It's unclear. Definitely not to d2, I guess, because in that case, I take on e4 immediately. So it's even better for me if compared to what? To queen to d1 or queen to e2. I thought queen e2. 
I thought queen e2 could have been an interesting option. Because queen d2, well, white can grab two minor pieces for a queen, but I don't think it's enough. It's not enough in general, and definitely not enough in this position, because, well, white's pieces are not coordinated. Okay? All right, queen is a queen. And let's castle now. I also managed to win a pawn. So queen and a pawn against two minor pieces. Should be technically winning position for black. All right. <clears throat> Bishop e2. All right, d5, central play now. Giovanni asks uh, if I know Tikhon Chernyaev, seven years old, Ukrainian master. No, I don't know. So knight to c6. Intending to bring other pawn to the, to the center and to free my bishop. Takes, takes. Okay, this increases... My presence in the center because the c6 supports d5. Now I'm going to play this e5 and so forth. Okay. So Kramnik student says, uh, not sure if I said this earlier, Chess explained that he will consider playing matches with other streamers. I will also consider playing matches with other streamers at some point. <laughs> All right. So, white is struggling finding the plan. All right, b4. Supporting the bishop on c5 looks like a good idea. I have to be aggressive still. So aggressive occupation of the center looks very nice. But what is next? What can be what could be my setup? <clears throat> Bishop to f5 maybe, queen to d7. Maybe rook e6 with the rook g6, something like this. Getting closer to the king. We'll see. By the way, why did I uh, start thinking of the attack on the flank because I have a perfect setup in the center. So center is perfectly controlled. In such a situation, attack on the flank, attack on the side should be just uh, as natural as uh, the screaming of my young son. <laughs> so bishop with f5 attacking c2 first and completing the development. Rook to c1, probably preparing c4, but if there is c4, I will play just d4 which is nice. And I wanted to try this rook e6, rook g6 lift. F3. Um, not sure what is the idea, probably preparing g4, but g4 will weaken the king even more. So let's bring the rook to g6. And now, if I play queen g5, bishop goes to f1, right? Right. But why not? Looks like an improvement for me and a problem for white. So now I guess it makes sense for me to um, close the axis of this guy to the king with the help of d4, right? Looks very natural. With the idea of also playing queen to e3. Yeah, so let's play d4. Knight to a5. Now I guess bishop to h3 is very nasty. Bishop to h3. Leaves white without a proper defense. So when the knight was on b3, there was a possibility to protect the g2 with the rook d2 move. Now it's impossible because d2 is not protected. And now there is queen to e3 check first. Then queen takes f3. And it's over. Yeah. Okay. Um, could you explain your plan on opening to get benefit from this bishop to e3? All right. Yeah, I'm going to explain this right now. 
Um, so usually here, when uh, Black plays a6, uh, two normal moves, I mean two most popular moves, are knight to c3 and bishop to d3. So in both cases, pawn e4 is protected. Um, if, uh, for example, knight goes to c3, I can't really play knight to f6 because of e5. So as we may notice, this knight controls d5 and e4. And after e5, well, the knight is forced back, most likely because this is not a position after knight d5. So, okay, queen a5 doesn't work because knight simply goes back. And uh, if uh, e d5, then look at this pawn. It's just very bad. So the pawn structure is very bad for black. That's the point. When the knight is on c3. Um, after bishop d3, well, pawn is simply protected. So knight f6 again makes no sense probably, but it's a possible move. After bishop to e3, uh, knight to f6 is possible because look, um, diagonal a5, e1 is still open. So if white plays e5 here, I have queen to a5 check attacking the pawn on e5. That's the thing. So um, it is very, very similar to this line. So after knight to d4, black sometimes plays uh, knight f6 immediately attacking the pawn. So if e5, there's queen a5, just taking that pawn on e5. And after knight to c3, uh, there is bishop to b4, uh, well-known <coughs> Sicilian attack, so-called. So e5, knight goes to d5, because knight e4 is just lost by force. And after knight d5, bishop d2, uh, knight takes c3, b c3, bishop e7, queen to g4. It's just a long theory which uh, leads to winning the exchange. After g6, h4, and so forth. So usually white is better here. Usually white is better, so there is a compensation for missing exchange if white takes it. But if white captures that rook at the right moment, white is better. So after bishop e3, I realize that I can play knight to f6. And after knight to c3 and bishop to b4, um, after e5 and knight to d5, let's say, bishop goes to d2. We have the same position, but with the inclusion of the a6 move. So in many lines, it is a useful move because it is a preparation of the b5. So if compared compare it to that line, I have extra tempo. And this may change the uh, evaluation of the line. I'm not sure if it really changes the evaluation of the line, but uh, well, it looks anyway like a uh, huge improvement if compared to that line. That's why I played this knight to f6, having exactly this in mind. So uh, what we had in the game uh, after knight to c3 and bishop b4, why I decided to protect the pawn this way. But it was really important to understand that after knight c6, queen is vulnerable here. So I already want to play this knight to e5 move. Uh, so most likely it deserved attention just to play something like a four in this position. I think black is already not worse after something like d5. Looks like black solves his problems because of this pin. And after e5, say, I can play knight to e4. And everything is just great. So I control the center, not worse than white. I have some ideas of uh, damaging the pawn structure and so on. So black is okay. Uh, but it, it was still better than playing a3 because after knight e5, e5, I think I just win the material. Uh, the last uh, possibility to have at least uh, some chances was probably to play queen's e2, in which case uh, I have to take here first and then to take on e4. But I'm not sure I can do it, uh, in fact, because of uh, bishop f4 here attacking both the knight e4 and knight on e5. Um, but probably I have some tactical tricks based on queen to a5 move, protecting the knight on e5 and intending to take on c3. So if bishop takes c5, I don't take on e5, but probably just take on c3, then taking on a1 with, with a temple, so it's lost for white. Um, if queen takes on e4 here, then I take on c3, but then king goes to e2 and my knight is still hanging here, so it's unclear. It's unclear, so maybe queen e2 was a move with some chances still. So maybe I should take on c3 and just play queen a5 first, creating a threat to this pawn. But in this case, white has a chance to protect the pawn with the bishop d2. And again, white is still in the game. It is still unclear if, if black achieved anything. All right. So potentially, uh, well, if, for example, it appears that knight e5 isn't that great, it was possible maybe just to take on c3 right now. Because if queen takes, I take the pawn. So bc3 is probably forced, and uh, something simple like castling followed by d5 uh, should give black very pleasant position, or maybe d5 immediately. So the pawn structure is better, and I guess black has no problems at very least. All right. Okay. I hope I explained my play, my plan, and so forth. All right. 
let's go further. Let's go further. Here is um, Chuck Riddell. Let's play. And again with black, what is going on? What is going on? So the third attempt, c5. Maybe Chuck is going to attack me. Somehow, I don't know, with a b4 or, I don't know. Oh, d3, all right. Very modest continuation. Let's play aggressively, d5. Knight d2, super passive. What is going on here? White is going to play g3, bishop g2, castles, and this typical so-called King's Indian attack. All right. What is the best way to meet this attack? So knight c6, bishop d6, knight to e7 is the one possibility. Another possibility is to try something like, you know, um, knight c6, knight f6, bishop e7. There's another one. There is also a possibility to bring the bishop to g7. So to play knight c6, knight e7, g6, bishop g7. I want to try something else. So I want to play knight c6, okay. Bishop e7. And h5. So like play an aggressive chess. I can see g3, so why not? <laughs> Let's see how white is going to stop me. h4 weakens g4. So let's use this with the help of knight f6 and knight g4. Maybe immediately, maybe slightly later. But knight on g4 can be potentially very annoying because from g4, my knight will attack f2, also prevent this knight from going to h2 or something, this typical thing that white usually does here. All right, so now d takes e4, d takes e4, queen to d3, looks interesting, but probably I'm not prepared well for this. Mm, a b6 preparing bishop a6 is interesting, as well as e5 now preparing bishop to g4, also an interesting option. Mm, I'm not sure which one is better for me, maybe just castling short can be a move, knight to g4 can be a move, a lot of interesting moves. d4, can be also considered here. Just grabbing the space. B5 even. Many moves. Which one to choose? Which one to choose? Let's try E5, come on. Let's play aggressively. So G4 can be occupied not only with the knight, but with the bishop as well, all right? Well, I had a lot of challenges, but now I can see only one. What's wrong with you guys? You are not patient. <laughs> you are not patient. <clears throat> but okay, you can come back and challenge me again. I hope. Or maybe you're just, uh, you know, not very good defenders or what is going on. Yes, I'm playing aggressively. I'm attacking and you decide not to play against me today. It's a pity thing, you know. I wanted to crush each and everybody. And you just leave me without this pleasure. Come on. ED5. All right. I can potentially even take with the queen, you know. I can take with the queen here because um, if knight jumps somewhere, I take the bishop, and if castles, I 
just grab the d3 one. D3 is under attack after queen takes d5. Well, this may be interesting. Let's try queen d5. Just attacking this weakness. Just attacking d3. Come on. How to protect it? Queen e2, queen c2. If queen c2, then bishop f5 is super annoying. Queen e2 may lead to the same, just bishop f5 attacking the weakness on d3. So probably taking on d5 wasn't that accurate, you know. Castles. Right, now I can take the pawn. I'm slightly underdeveloped, but I think at least I'm not that worse in the sense of development if compared to white. So let's just take the pawn, right? Yeah. I can't see the reason why not to capture this guy. <coughs> sorry, sorry, that is my voice. Question, how do you implement those calculation strategies in your game when the position is relatively in the opening early middle game when there are so many possibilities? Well, I just focus on uh, the critical lines. I'm just trying to focus on critical lines. And uh, the next question, how do I understand that this or that line is critical? Well, it's just an experience, uh, some sort of intuition and also uh, pattern recognition. So I just understand that, for example, in this position, this should be uh, the main topic and this shouldn't be uh, considered at all, something like this. Okay, knight to g5 with probably the idea of playing uh, queen to b3 attacking f7. Maybe it's time to castle, just protecting f7, being ready for bishop to g4 or something like that. Yeah, I think it's it's a move. Kramnik student says that I have 1,149 subscribers. Come on, guys, if you don't want to play, at least subscribe <laughs> to my channel. There you will find a lot of instructive stuff. Not only uh, live streams, but also some um, instructive chess videos on various topics like decision making, calculation and so forth. All right, knight e4 attacking my pawn h5, right? Knight f6, bishop f6, queen h5 is a threat. So let us play bishop g4. Developing the um, bishop, attacking the queen m, hence protecting h5. So it looks like a great position with the extra pawn, better development and so forth. All right, takes, takes. So just an exchange and f3 weakens position a lot. All right, where to put the bishop? I think it doesn't really matter, but let's put it on e6, controlling b3. So preventing um, queen to b3 move. Knight to e4, the move I underestimated because now there is a possibility to damage my pawn structure. Unless I play something like queen to d8. Then my pawn on c5 is also hanging, so I guess let's take the queen simply. All right, now it gives me a chance to just go back. I guess uh, something like knight takes f6 check should have been played. <clears throat> so centralization now. Some simplification is probably a good idea for me. All right, but there there is another move I underestimated. Well, that's bad. Starting, starting playing some bullshit. Bishop g5 was better, probably. Yeah, because this pawn structure is ugly. This pawn structure is ugly. And I have only 20 seconds, even less. Um... Here is Mark. Okay. He's quite aggressive, even more aggressive than me.
Oops. Oh, that was annoying. That was annoying. Just one move before the checkmate. It's really pity, really pity. But okay, interesting game. So I was like slow at some point, right? So let's have a look uh, at what went wrong for White at some point. I think ED5 was, was a critical mistake. So here is our analysis board. Um, let's have a look at that moment. So C3, I just played E5 and uh, yeah, ED5 helps me a lot. So after Queen D5, I don't see a clear way to protect D3, where after position becomes just like uh, the question of conversion, I guess. Um, all right. So Gary Fang says uh, 2600 in bleed super high for an international master. No, it's not super high because I was 2740 on this website. And by the way, uh, the rating differs from one playing zone to another one. For example, on chess 24, I was 3000 at some point. Uh, on chess.com, my uh, highest rating was 2640 and so forth. All right. Um, so, so. Yeah, somewhere here, I guess, um, White could have improved his play. So this looks interesting. I mean, this H4, but probably even better was to consider just H3. So modest continuation, uh, not weakening the G4 square. The idea that if I play H4, then uh, just G4. And, uh, well, I'm not sure if I achieved anything here. So... White probably needs this pawn in attack, in the future attack, because it is the uh, basic idea behind uh, this opening setup. So at some point, white just activates pawns on the king side. And uh, once white manages to play g5, let's say this pawn is supported by f4, this h4 may become even a weakness for black. <clears throat> so I would definitely uh, consider this idea, h3 and g4. Something like this. Uh, okay, h4 can't be that bad, of course, uh, but after knight f6, I think, uh, again, the better uh, approach for white is uh, just to castle as soon as possible, uh, to bring uh, one of the pieces to the e-file, maybe to play e5, and uh, then to play c3 and d4. So, same idea probably, but the other uh, order of moves. Maybe even to start with the e5 here, I'm not quite sure in this, uh, because of this knight g4 attacking this, and probably the only defense is something like this where after there may be some sort of problem uh, with a c2 after I play something like knight to b4, or maybe just queen to c7 attacking this uh, one more time. Uh, yeah, so maybe it was uh, good just to castle first. And uh, after I castle or something, uh, just to play a rook e1, preparing this e5, and maybe now this e5 isn't that cool because of ed5. First of all, I can't take with a queen no longer because bishop is no longer hanging, so white can simply take on e5. And uh, another problem is that if I take with the knight, you just take my pawn on e5, right? So uh, just castling first, then weakening your position with the c3 move. So c3 was definitely a weakening of the position, and well, I believe that black has uh, more than one possibility here uh, to get a decent play. I chose this e5 uh, because I realized that I uh, have no problems in the center, I have the idea of bishop g4, bishop, knight g4, this pawn on d3 is weak, I'm going to play something like d4 at some point. So looks like just a very pleasant position. Once again, I think castling was better than taking on d5, for sure. Uh, at least protecting the bishop and preventing me from playing uh, this queen takes d5. Because now, white is in trouble. Um, so it doesn't really matter what white does, I have bishop's f5 move. Maybe knight to c4 deserved attention here, with the idea of knight to e3. So if I play, um, say, bishop to f5 here, there is knight to e3 attacking my queen, and if queen takes, then knight takes, queen takes. And at least white has a pair of bishops, and the light script bishop can potentially compensate the missing pawn. So maybe knight to c4 was an interesting try here. Okay, I can probably consider uh, just e4 move. But it's also not that clear to me. So let's say if white plays uh, something like knight to g5. If I take on d3, takes on d3, takes here, something like bishop c6, takes c6, knight e5, attacking just everything here. Unclear position and, uh, well... Probably just a good idea for white, just a good tr good try. But definitely not giving up this pawn, because after that I think white has no compensation whatsoever. All right. 
<clears throat> uh, Mark's making a rocket again. Yes, uh, Don G is here. Wow, that's great. That's great. All right. Uh, I can hear a little I am's voice. Yeah, probably he will be even uh, like a GM. So probably he's a little GM. All right. Knight c4, e4, I was worried. Yeah, knight c4, e4, we just dis discussed this line. So it's not that entirely clear, I mean, okay. So let's continue. Uh, finally, there are some challenges. So whom to play? Whom to play? Let's play to love15. Nice nickname. And finally, finally, uh, white pieces. Let's go. By the way, that loss in the previous game costed me a lot of rating points, but all right, that's not a big deal. And c6, probably uh, the worst opening to face when you want to play aggressive chess. But who knows? Let's try. Let's try the following thing. Just e5. Uh, and knight to c3, right? That is the aggressive approach. That is the aggressive approach. So. The idea is to play h4, and if h5, then knight to f4. <clears throat> That's the point here. All right. I can also bring my knight to h5 quickly, if it is necessary. Uh, but after h6, okay, black is ready to retreat with the bishop. Still h4 should be should be a good idea just to grab the space there. So let's go. Let's grab the space. Okay, c5. Is definitely Black's plan, and I'm not sure that Knight on d7 is placed correctly, uh, because it's better to have the Knight on c6 when you play c5 to exert additional pressure on white center. So now I think I can just uh, continue developing my pieces in a very natural way, like Bishop e3, then f4, supporting e5, and at some point I will play f5. I mean, I have less problems if compared to the Knight on c6, less problems with protecting my center. So, I'm more or less satisfied. Knight, right, or bishop? It's a good question. If I take with the knight, there is bishop to b4, uh, which may be not that uh, actually dangerous for white, because I can even play a3, and if bishop c3, bc3, okay, I'll have a pair of bishops. <clears throat> and yeah, knight is usually uh, much better here, uh, supporting f5 than the bishop on d4. It's unclear what to do with that bishop. Let's take with the knight. Let us take with the knight. All right, knight to e7, intending to play knight to c6, right? It's time to complete a development. And castles, next move. And then f5, and let's go. Everything is ready, I guess. <clears throat> so like French defense with a bishop on h7. On the other hand, this bishop is... Um, well, it's much better than the typical French bishop, no questions. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, this h6 is kind of weakening of the position. All right, what to do after bishop c5? So definitely king h1 isn't a move because of queen h4. So we can consider something like knight to e2, knight c3 to e2, then playing something like c3 maybe. Knight to a4 can be also an option, I guess. Attacking the bishop. 
and then maybe even play in c4. Queen to d2, what else? Not so clear, so now I start feeling that my pieces are slightly misplaced. Knight to c3 to b5, by the way, with the idea of knight to d6 can be a move. But then just castles first, and what? c3, a6, knight d6. And this can be an interesting play for me. Let's bring the knight to b5. All right. So I think Black could have considered playing a6 at some point, just preventing me from playing knight to b5. <clears throat> because in general I can even sacrifice the pawn there on d6, why not? So knight d6 takes takes and... Okay, if I lose the pawn, not a big deal. What's important, I will have a pair of bishops and some interesting possibilities to use dark squares in, in my attack. Alright. Queen to b6, okay. So here I wanted to play c3, just protecting the knights. With the pawn. Maybe knight to d6 was better, actually. Was check forcing the knight, sorry, bishop to d6 or something. Or something very close to that. But okay, I don't think that c3 is a bad move. Anyway. So black is thinking that is a good sign. Maybe <clears throat> black is struggling a bit. All right, this forces me, right? I should do it anyway. And now I have some threats. Finally, have some play. So now that f5 is a great threat now. Probably I lose b2 pawn. But okay, it's not a big problem. I think we should start the attack as soon as possible after that. Okay, Black decided not to capture it. Which is probably just a portion of great news. Now I can play g5, g6. One attacking idea. Another attacking idea is just to play queen d2 now, in fact. Yeah, this looks like a stabilizing move, by the way. Answering to Gary. So stabilizing means uh, actually protecting weaknesses so sometimes you have some vulnerable spots in your position and you manage to find the move which kind of protects everything and somehow makes your position no longer that vulnerable that's that's what it means oh my god he's screaming like crazy right um let's go now it's time to attack and principle of two weaknesses means that uh you attack one weakness in the opponent's position, but then you create one more. So that uh, you can alternate threats against two of them. And at some point, uh, your opponent simply fails to protect everything in his position. So the more weaknesses opponents uh, have, the better for you. You have more chances to win. Because usually there are enough resources to protect only one weakness. <clears throat> okay, e5. So what to do now? Let's take here first. Now let's take this one. Now we're going to open up a position because we have a pair of bishops and bishops are great in open positions. So knight takes c5, bishop takes h6. Attacking something. Attacking something there. All right, now what? Some sort of regrouping like bishop g5, queen d6, bishop f6 looks very tempting not to try it. 
let's do it now I have a shred of queen h6 and queen g5 wow it's very good looks like winning check oh there is a counter shred of queen h2 checkmate but okay I take the knight next move I mean bishop g6 is obviously the only defense and I take the knight not the bishop that was the last trick to, to consider. All right, so let's have a look where Black could have improved his play. Um, when I first played this line with White, I was like Kate, I guess. I was like 10 years old or maybe 11 years old, and then I uh, switched to other lines. Um, so the main idea behind 92 that if Black starts with the c5 move, and so I do believe it is the main line. Uh, then we play h4. Uh, creating a threat of playing h5 and now if uh, h5 let's say which is a typical reaction in such a situation I just play knight to f4 um, and uh, I want to grab the bishop damage in the pawn structure so creating this pawn on e6 and pawn on g6 and if uh, something like cd4 I can take on uh, g6 if bishop h7 then knight takes h5 and if cd4 then instead of taking with the queen which leads to knight c6 I can play knight to b5 uh, trying to grab this pawn with the knights and having this slightly crazy but uh, very interesting position and as Fuxia mentioned this on live chat it is a share of attack yeah Alexia sure have played that um, yeah sort of I don't know at the very beginning of um, 2000 and uh, 1 and 2 and maybe slightly later on there are some games against the Palaf, I guess, and so forth. So interesting line, but nowadays I think it is more or less refuted, so almost nobody plays that. Um, well, sometimes, accidentally, somebody tries that, but uh, in general, black has sufficient play. Okay, h6 is also a good move, uh, but after h4, I don't think knight e7 is, is a good idea, so something like c5 should be played here. With the idea of bringing the knight to c6, not to d7, to exert more pressure on my d4. That's the idea. So... Knight to d7 leaves your knight passive, I think. And after h5 and uh, bishop to e3 and f4, I think I'm fine. I mean, fine in the sense of uh, controlling the center. But position still should be should be pliable. Uh, so knight to e7, all right, it's probably a bit ugly, but uh, I didn't uh, actually uh, use it. So I could have played f5 here. So the engine says f5 was possible. Wow, nice. Nice. Just in the spirit of this line, by the way. So if knight takes c5, I guess there is something like bishop b5. Check. And then I take on e6. Completely opening the position, castling and attacking. All right. I play bishop g2, giving you chances. You played knight to c6, which was okay. I castled. You played bishop to c5, which is also okay. I played knight to b5. And here he says just, uh, well, he eat says castling. I mean, the engine says, just castling, yeah, uh, preventing this knight d6, I think. So, queen to b6, I could have played uh, knight to d6 immediately here. That was probably my, my mistake. Um, I should have done this. In this case, if your king remains in the center, okay, it's, it's good in itself. If you take on d6, I'm kind of saving the tempo on this c3 move, which is not needed. Uh, I can even consider c4, I guess. That is an interesting idea. And after c3, okay, a6, probably casting was better. Knight d6, I just want to um, describe the uh, position now. So, um, castling, uh, I played queen d2, this move which stabilized the position. Uh, in fact, g5 immediately was just in the spirit of this position, to start the attack as soon as possible, to open up a position because you have a pair of bishops and so forth. After queen d2, it was possible to take on d4. I realized that you can win the pawn. After bishop d4, queen takes d6, black is a pawn up. But I thought I would have some compensation for it because of <coughs> mainly pair of bishops and a very clear plan of just uh, playing g5, opening the g-file, and then just using this g-file while black is probably struggling a bit to find an active counterplay. I don't know, maybe uh, to start with something like rook e1, central move, just controlling e5 additionally. And then just bring in uh, these pawns to attack, so g5 and so on. But that was definitely Black's best choice here, Black's best strike. Queen d8 is just too passive. And now after g5, I'm just uh, much better. And e5, well, 
very natural try, right, to activate your pieces, but at the same time, you open up a position. So you do exactly what I want in this situation. Now I just took on h6, took on e5, bishop h6, and once position became opened, well, it was no longer that hard for me to find the way to your king. All right? Okay. So um, always give a check, it could be made. A uh, nice, nice thing to suggest. Okay. Uh, e4, c6, d4, d5, knight e2, d4, knight e4, bishop f5, knight to c5. What is that, Dungey? Is that your way of uh, playing against Karakhan, or what's that? <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's go further. Th thanks for the game. So, uh, let us play it's y hooks x. Except. And white pieces again. Very nice. Let's go. Let's go. And Karakhan again. <clears throat> How to attack Karakhan the other way? Panov. Panov is here to help me. Knight f6, knight c3. And e6 immediately. All right. So I guess that knight to c6 is slightly better than e6. And this bishop d6 is definitely not what black usually plays here. Or maybe I'm just out of my book already and simply don't know this possibility. But usually bishop goes to e7 because bishop d6 gives me a possibility to play c5 now with a temple. The knight to b5, bishop to a5, bishop d2. What is this? It's probably a great line because there is a threat of knight to d6. Well, let's try it. I mean, why not? Isn't it great for white? Oh, really? Okay, I'll take it. With pleasure. I'll take it with pleasure. I have a feeling that this should be just strategically winning position for white. Uh, with this great dark squid bishop having no counterpart, in fact. Maybe I'll overestimate. <coughs> Excuse me, my position, but I'm definitely not used to this way of playing it. Right, let's start with bishop d3 and just continue the development. Just castling. h6, another pawn move. Alright, what about g3? Preparing bishop to f4. What can be more natural than this way of developing the piece? And then I'll just squeeze black on both flanks, like b4, a4, b5. I control e5 completely. I can bring my bishop to d6. Yeah, it's lost. Absolutely lost. It's just lost. And this is like... Okay, I can take on e5 twice now. If I take with the knight, knight, knight can't go to h5, so let's take on e5 with the knight. Now, in addition to this advantage, I have extra pawn. Yeah. Bishop to g4, isn't it just a uh, blunder? Because I can take on f6 now with the bishop. Bishop d1, bishop d8, it's lost for sure. So it's just a blunder. Queen d7 was probably lost chance, but then f3, and anyway, I win some material. And this is just a extra minor piece with no compensation. No compensation whatsoever. Rook e6. Kramingston has 64 playing strange today. Well, first of all, I don't play strange against Swihook's X <laughs> today. <laughs> I just play really straightforward chess, like 
very natural central strategy and so forth. Well, bishop d6 is definitely not good. Bishop b7 is a move, castling and so forth. And if white plays c5, white plays there c5 without the tempo, which means black has the time to undermine the pawn and so on. Uh, question from Raymond. Are you accepting challenges? Of course, I do. That is exactly what I'm doing here. <laughs> accepting challenges from viewers. All right, centralization. Oh, the king to help my pieces finish finish the deal. <laughs> Don G says my dog destructed me. I had to check the game later. All right. I guess everything is already happened in this game. Um. <sighs> Fixing b7 and going for it. Decisive breakthrough. Very simple one to find, of course. Super typical. <clears throat> Anakin is out of square. Donji, uh, Crowning Student already is super chatted. Yeah, so everything was decided at the very beginning of this game, so I didn't even need to attack a lot, in fact. So after knight c3, I expected uh, something like uh, knight to c6, knight to f3 and bishop g4, or maybe e6 like you played, uh, but then... Um, after knight f3, something like bishop e7, in which case uh, I usually, uh, when I do this, I play a3 here, and after castling, let's say I just play bishop to g5 or maybe something else. But the idea that after dc4, bishop c4, I have isolated pawn on d4, but very active setup here, so it's possible to attack uh, having this setup with white. The idea behind a3 is to control b4, uh, preventing this knight to c6, knight b4, and knight d5 maneuver. The one idea and another idea is uh, when uh, black's knight is on c6, uh, there is usually a threat of knight b4. Uh, when uh, white tries to do something like bishop b3, bishop c2, and queen to d3. So a3 prevents black from just exchanging my light square bishop, which is very important in the sense of attack on the king's side in this situation. But bishop d6, well, this gives me a very important tempo. So after c5, um, I can consider uh, like uh, having the better version of uh, this position. For example, if you play bishop e7 and I play c5, you can undermine the pawn right now. That's the one thing you can try here. But if you play bishop d6, c5 and bishop uh, e7, for instance, uh, you no longer have a chance to undermine this pawn. I mean, at least it won't be that uh, efficient. So after bishop f4, let's say you play b6. I have plenty of different options, including bishop b5 check, which should be also very uh, pleasant to play, knight b5. But in general, I can just play b4, and if a5, I play a3. I mean, my rook is no longer hanging, so it's just a clear tempo, clear tempo up, just at very least, I mean. So um, after bishop c7, black's problem is that I play knight to b5, and now I attack the bishop. I want to grab it, and once I do it, uh, I have a much better position. And if bishop a5, I just play bishop to d2, let's say, and there is a threat of knight d6. So even if you exchange the bishop for a bishop, not for the knight, you still have great problem with protecting d6 square. Mm, at the moment, I have a threat of also playing b4. So probably the bishop d2 is more or less forced, uh, where after I would have captured with the knight probably to avoid knight to e4, and now there is a threat of knight to d6. Maybe that was playable for black. Maybe it was better than uh, playing a6, because after a6, well, it's just... In my opinion, just lost. 
So I take on c7, queen c7, bishop d3. So I have all the advantages of this position. In addition to them, I have pair of bishops. And once my bishop is on f4, it's lost positionally. That's the thing. All right. Um, so Don G just uh, super chatted. That is fantastic thing. I'm really happy that you do this uh, uh, each and every um, stream, as well as crowning student, as well as Zwei Hosex and other guys sometimes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. And uh, I have a feeling that Paul did this as well. So thank you guys. Thank you. This inspires me and uh, makes me feel happy. All right. So uh, let's play another game. Let's play another game. Um, home to play. Coffee Cluster. Let's play Coffee Cluster. Um, Twi Jose says, sorry for this bad game. Uh, well, every game actually teaches you something new, I guess. Sometimes you just have to play, have to play badly to learn. All right. Here we go. So I'm playing with black coffee cluster. Come on. Your turn. Your turn. D4. All right. After D4, it will be very hard for me to attack. But there is Benoni, right? There is Benoni to attack. And coffee cluster says, thank you for accepting. No questions. I'm here to accept your challenges. <laughs> Guys. Um, D5. E6, Benoni, more than one, I hope. <clears throat> Takes, now D6, and G6, and Bishop G7. F4, super aggressive as well. So Castle first. Everything else after that. Okay, so bishop to d3. What can I do here? I can consider rook e8. I'm, I don't know Siri here, obviously, so to start with. So rook to e8 looks interesting. Um, just b5 right away. It's also interesting just to sacrifice a pawn to have some to have some time for further activity maybe um, to create some strats like b5 bishop b5 queen a5 queen is sort of knight e4 looks interesting let's try b5 come on we're going to uh, play uh, aggressive chess right right So if knight takes b5, I can also consider knight takes e4, bishop e4, and rook to e8. Interesting thing. Also, after knight to b5, I can try c4 attacking the bishop first. And then grabbing that central pawn. <clears throat> so b5, although uh, being a move on the flank, so a side move, it's actually, in my opinion, just a clearly... Uh, Central move because the idea is to achieve something in the center. All right, e5. Wow. So, what if I just take on e5, f takes e5, and I jump to g4, attacking this e5 pawn? Isn't it great for me? Maybe it's not. So, if I take on d5, I think there is a trick based on bishop e4. It's not even a trick, just a very natural move. Um, and I lose some material for sure. All right, so I guess uh, knight to g4 should be played here. Attacking e5. When I was very young, again, something like 10 years old or 11 years old, I used to play Volga Gambit or Banco Gambit, so-called. 
Uh, so there were some similar ideas in one of the lines. So when white achieved this great uh, pause in the center, but they became quite vulnerable very soon. And black had some counterplay based on that. Knight g4. All right, so what white is going to do? e5 is hanging. I have also shreds based on b4. I have shreds based on c4 and queen b6. For example, if castles, I can consider this c4 seriously followed by queen b6. And this may happen right now. So let's play the c4, bishop e4, queen b6, followed by knight f2. But there is d6 counterplay. All right, it's, it's probably not that clear. So c4, bishop e4, maybe I will just play, I don't know, bishop to b7. Wow, position is super tricky. Maybe b4 first, and then queen takes d5. But if I play b4, there is knight to b5 move. That should be considered seriously. In which case, probably I can simply take on e5. Well, maybe not simply, but looks like a move. It's a completely different type of position. I usually play, if compared to what I usually play, I mean. Let's go this crazy. I like the idea of playing c4 anyway. Uh, creating the room for my queen on b6. This looks very, very good. Maybe I'm overestimating my position, but I'm going to uh, actually grab the space here quickly on the queen side, then to complete the development. With the help of bishop b7 so let's say bishop e4 i just play b4 first and then bishop b7 and everything is hanging in white's position so i don't think i'm worse in that case looks very promising okay that was my idea so if knight b5 then queen b6 and again, everything is hanging <laughs> for both sides, in fact. Uh, but I think my position will be slightly better after that. All right, d6. I wanted just to take here, bc3. So I already a minor piece up. And I have a threat of queen b6, attacking the king, attacking b2, and creating sort of knight f2. So too many threats, I think. I guess I will have a material advantage for sure. So like bishop takes a8, I just take on b2. So probably uh, white will start with a bc3, but then I have a trick like bishop to b7. Everything is based on this uh, queen b6 check, I mean. So queen b6 now followed by knight f2 is one possibility. Uh, but I think in that case, what do we have? We have material balance. So I guess CB2 should be played here. Attacking the bishop and the rook. Oh, but I missed, oh my God, I missed bishop D4. So queen B6 was obviously the best move. Oh my God, I'm just blundering like an idiot. I'm just blundering like an idiot. I missed bishop D4. Yep. Yeah. Queen B6 first and then CB2, of course. That was a stupid mistake. That was a stupid mistake, all right? Now position is more or less balanced, I guess. Still looks crazy, of course, but I mean, maybe white is even better here. Yeah, I think I have to protect this pawn, bishop e6 should be played followed by knight to d7 or something hmm. i don't like this position anymore i don't like this position
Right, let's try this. Check. Wrong move order. I mean, queen b6 first, everything else then. But not vice versa. Okay. Now what? I think b-file is very important here to prevent rook b1, rook b7. The pawn in e5 is under pressure. It would be not that simple for, for white to make a progress here, I hope. So d7, is it a big threat? Not sure, but knight to g5 can be potentially a big threat. So now I want to bring my king closer. Closer to what? I don't even know. Yeah, very bad play. Very, very bad play. Mm. Check. Takes. One more check. Okay, I'm winning. I'm winning now. Only because of the time travel, so I found some tactical tricks and so forth. But White was very, very close to winning this. All right, so uh, my decisive mistake was somewhere here when I played CB2. <laughs> that was just a bad, bad luck. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see this bishop d4 resource. I was somehow focused on other things. So queen b6 first, obviously, and after king goes to h1, c takes b2. That was a correct order of moves. And after bishop takes, I probably take here with the threat of knight to f2 and knight to e3 still. Uh, but here is rook to b1, surprisingly. So maybe the things are not that clear as I wanted them to be. Attacking the knight, I mean. So I can play uh, this, knight to f2. Uh, rook takes f2, queen takes f2, rook takes b8. Pair of bishops, but this pawn is super dangerous. Uh, but my pawn is also not that bad. I mean, probably I have some tricks based on this c3 move now. And if d7, I can even consider bishop takes d7. And after rook f8, bishop f8, uh, queen d7. It's not a checkmate after queen f1 because it's knight g1, but I promote my pawn. So I play this, knight g1 and c2. And why can, why can probably resign here? So interesting line showing the uh, fact that this position is super complicated. Uh, but I think black should have played that for sure. So that was that was cruel. That was interesting. Um, I'm not sure that casting was the best move here, but I don't know what to do. In fact, because I'm ready for these things again: c4, b4, then queen b6 or something. Uh, so maybe this e5 wasn't that prepared. So only the theory can answer the question if it is a good idea for white to play this, if it is a good idea for black to play this, and so on. <clears throat> All right. So. Yeah, interesting game. Very interesting game. So black went crazy right from the start, as well as white, by the way. So white uh, took a lot of risks here in this game as well. So just uh, super aggressive play in the center prior to completing a development. Interesting. Okay, I was super lucky. I was super lucky somewhere by the end of the game. Nice game. Okay, let's go further. Um, here is... Hasha <laughs> shine. I'm not sure I pronounced this correctly. Sorry if I did some mistakes, but let's play. Where is my opponent? Where is my opponent, Mr. Hashashine? Are you going to play or not? I'm waiting for several seconds. Because there are also other um, challengers, so. Yeah, 
Rosh Hashanah is online. Hopefully, there will be the first move very soon. E4. All right, come back to Sicilian, I guess. Come back to Sicilian. Let's remember the childhood. I used to play Nidorf. I used to play Nidorf even when I was like 2360 or something. I was still playing Nidorf. Knight to d7. One of possible replies here. Bishop d7 is too dry, in my opinion. Knight to d7 is uh, possible, but a bit risky in some of the lines. But I don't remember those lines anyway. <laughs> because I switched to um, e5 on the first move many years ago. So I don't really refresh my knowledge in this sidelines so d4 okay let's take knight takes d4 now knight to f6 right can be played a6 can be played let's try a6 if there are some tactics connected with the knight to e6, I don't think so. I just take on e6, yeah. There is no checkmate, so I think I can play a6 now. Don G says Kasparov versus the world. Kasparov played bishop b5 check. I guess another great example is uh, Ivanchuk's uh, game against Kasparov, where he played bishop to b5 check and uh, won the game with white and Linares many, many years ago. The one uh, which uh, Ivanchuk won, I mean the tournament eventually, leaving Karpov and Kasparov behind. Super tournament for Ivanchuk. Chucky. Andre, in case you missed, are you on Patreon or will you join Patreon? Well, I think all these things like Patreon and uh, the Swords are good for uh, big channels, not for uh, the channel like mine, I guess. Maybe I'm missing something, but well. I have a feeling that it's too early for me to think of uh, collaboration with Patreon and so forth. All right. Castles. Okay, now, uh, Blay has plenty of different options. I think something like g6 should be completely playable. Bring the bishop to g7, then castling, and playing in the style of Dragador or something like this. So, Mix of neither of and dragon. Question from Raymond. Uh, what software are you using to stream? Uh, XSplit. Queen e1. Doesn't necessarily uh, create a threat. So bishop g7 can be played. And now f3. Well, I expected actually f4. But okay. Castles. Castles first. Queen b6 was probably also interesting to try. But then queen f2, and I think white is okay still. Oh, I missed knight to e4 trick, or knight to g4. Queen b6 was definitely much better than castling. My goodness. Yeah, my fault. We'll analyze this after the game. Bishop e3. Now what? Um, as far as I remember, in such a situation... It's an interesting idea to start with the e5 move to uh, actually kick the knight away. And the next move will be d5. And I think 
at least black should completely equalize, but I think black will have even a better position. So the point is that if compared to neither or anything, uh, g6 controls f5. So there is no knight f5 possibility. Great. e5, d5 should be, should be just amazing position for black after all. So I definitely misplayed it with this moves like f3, queen a1, and they're quite passive, accomplishing nothing actually, and uh, just moving the pieces away from the center. That's why black can play this uh, active way, I guess. Oh, knight to f5, seriously? No, it's it, it's not an attack. I mean, there is no compensation whatsoever. Come on. So how to react to this correctly? There should be something done in the center, I think, d5 to e4. Maybe knight c5, knight takes d3 should be considered to simplify the position slightly. Knight to d5 is also a move. Which one is the best one? Do not. Let's start with the king h8, just preparing rook to g8 with the counterattack. All right. Central move, by the way, controlling h4 square with the queen. So there is no queen h4. I guess it's important. I'm probably landing on f4 with the knight at some point. Should be great. Another idea to consider here is just to play bishop f6, bishop g5, exchange in dark square with bishops, and finally get into f4 without problems. But immediate knight f4 looks also just, just good. If it takes an f4, ef4, my bishop starts attacking here and so forth. Yeah, great position. Probably just winning. Probably just winning. Okay. And you know, I like the way it feels. I mean, uh, today's session in general, so this active play and so forth. I guess in a week we will just repeat the topic. I will be aggressive again. <laughs> I will be aggressive again. So knight c3 was played. All right. What do we have here? Knight to c5 is an option. Um, knight takes d3. It's also an option. Let's start with the knight c5, I think. So the only problem that black has here is, of course, complete development. Once black is developed completely, it's over. Because there is only one pawn for the piece, only one, which is not enough. And there is no clear way to attack me, because I control everything here. Okay, f6, I can take with the queen. I still control all the squares here, I guess. All important squares, I mean. Bishop c4, all right. Guess bishop e6, just completing the development. So bishop e6, bishop takes, I don't know, f takes, deserves attention, everything. So position is just winning. Winning with the extra material, great center, and so forth. Okay. Check. Looks like a simplification. But no, I win some additional material because this one is hanging as well on F1. Uh, now it's over completely. All right, so white uh, sacrificed a piece uh, appeared. There was no compensation whatsoever. Uh, but even if knight goes away here, I just play d5. And there is just a perfect position for black. Look at this. So I have a better control of central squares already. 
And after e d5, let's say I bring the knight to the center, attacking this bishop. Uh, bishop is vulnerable because we had already played f3. Uh, once this bishop goes away from this diagonal a7, g1, well, I have the access to that diagonal with the queen. So probably bishop f2 should be played. Where after I can continue with, uh, say, knight to f4. Again, another super aggressive move, bring the knight to very active and nice position, having the idea of playing queen g5. Attacking the bishop on d3, so if I take on d3, it's just a lost position strategically for white, and so on. So very nice positions, a lot of tempi um, are just being won uh, with natural moves like knight to f4, and so on, so no problems. And by the way, it's a typical setup, it's a typical, uh, I mean, it's a typical idea for this setup uh, when you have g6, so just e5, d5, right? So white failed to control super important d5 square so for example after g6 i would have considered something like c5 sorry c4 controlling d5 uh, in which case uh, you prevent me from playing all this uh, at least right now or just a simple move knight to c3 was also absolutely playable and very natural for this um, position uh, continue with f4 not f3 f3 is very passive so that's the point. You played too passive in this game, I think. Um, so, let's continue. Let's continue and play several games more. Uh, here is Master of Chipos. Let's check if that's true. <laughs> E4. Let's go. C5. Let's continue with the knight C3. Hello, Master of Chipos. Uh, G6. All right. So here I can try D4, right? If I'm not mistaken, it's possible to play here. Yeah, we'll have just a transposition to dragon. Um, I mean, this accelerated dragon with just taken with the queen, I guess. Cause yeah, after knight f6, I can't really play e5, I think. Or can I? What is the difference if compared to position with the knight on f3 and the knight on c3? In both cases, of course, black plays knight to c6. That's the idea behind uh, giving white a chance of playing e5. And then my queen goes away somewhere. Uh, but there is no good square, I think. All right, let's just play knight to f3. Just with the transposition. And now queen goes to a4. It's probably not that, uh, you know, super aggressive approach or anything, but, well, this at least creates some some threats. So now e5. That's the idea behind queen a4, to pin the knight c6, right? <clears throat> to have a possibility of playing e5. Now I exert some pressure on knight c6, and if bishop d7, I grab the bishop, and I have pair of bishops. Very modest achievement, honestly, but still an achievement in my opinion. Um, okay, now what? It's very tempting to try something like bishop e3, rook d1. Uh, let's try it. What about this? Is it a good idea or not? Depends on where the queen goes. So I have some follow-ups. For example, our queen c7, I can try, say, uh, knight to b5. Knight to b5 and where the queen goes after that. Well, let's try not to b5. I'm not sure it is the best move, but it looks like a tempo move with some ideas behind. So, so I can bring my knight to d4, then damage the pawn structure. 
which is usually done by playing bishop b5 and bishop c6. But why not to do the same with the knights, saving the bishop on the board? Looks like an interesting idea. Okay, queen c8. Uh, what about taking on a7 even? It is probably too, too much. But after knight takes a7, I attack the queen. Look at this. Knight a7, rook a7, bishop a7, I am the just the exchange up, right? Right. Knight a7, but then queen simply goes away somewhere. But where again? That's the question. Um, I have some tempi there, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. At the very least, I can bring my bishop to b5 after that and... Uh, Yeah, this looks super attractive. Bishop to b6 is also an interesting trick if, of course, uh, black takes on b6. I take on a8, then knight c7 check and takes on a8. But after bishop b6, black simply castles. So if I want to achieve anything, I should do it right now with the temple. Let's take on a7. It looks so tempting. Look, if rook a7, bishop a7, and queen to a8, pin in my bishop, I can play bishop b5, pin in the knight c6. Nice tactics. Nice counterattack. Castling lawn instead of bishop g7, wow. That's why Jose is. You have some suicidal ideas today. <laughs> Castling lawn, no. It's definitely bad. Have very easy access to, to the queen side. But we'll look at this uh, afterwards in the analysis. Rook a said, okay, I take with the bishop. Extra exchange, isn't it? So queen a8, I just play bishop to b5. That's my idea. And if castles, I can just go back, right? Bishop to e3 looks very safe. <clears throat> Not only the exchange, the pawn as well. <laughs> Swahos X. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, so Swahos X says, but I like your wow, what is that face? <laughs> Right, I will try to uh, come up with this face um, more often if you like it. Why not? Maybe it will give me more super chats. All right, c3, uh, very important move uh, covering d4 square, so that's limiting this knight. And, well, of course, if it is relevant or anything, uh, maybe preparing queen to c2 just to retreat. Comfortable one at some point, don't know. Let's bring the bishop to b5. I like this position for the bishop. Control in c6, preventing queen c6 and so forth. After knight f5, I wanted to bring my bishop to b6. Or maybe it's just the start of a stupid, stupid play. I don't know. The bishop b6, there's queen e6 attacking my bishop. I'm not sure. I'll have a good defense after that. On the other hand, what to do? You should maybe queen c4 first. I'm trying to simplify the things. Now I can take the queen, I think. Or just take in here. But no. So I somehow missed, missed the thread. <laughs> but okay, now, now I'm fine completely, again. So king e2, very good square for king, very safe one. No checks whatsoever, no problems. 
And now it's just time to convert convert this position. A4, starting pushing pawns, and knight g4 is a mistake because of bishop d7. I saw that. That's why I didn't play h3 or something. So that was a cheapo, I guess, bishop to d7, right? But anyway, position was already uh, winning. So black spent a lot of time, I think, of moving queen in the opening, giving him a chance to grab the pawn, uh, to grab the exchange, and so on. Uh, as far as I remember, uh, after knight to e5, uh, one good idea is just to play queen to c7. Another interesting idea is just to sacrifice that pawn by playing uh, bishop to g7. I mean, I can take on c6, obviously. But for b6 taken with the queen is not necessarily that great. So just in the style, in the spirit of uh, dragon, black sacrifices the pawn and then starts using this b and c files uh, to exert real pressure on my position. And the development is just amazing for black here. So I don't think taking on c6 twice is a good idea. Sometimes I saw that white uh, plays on like bishop to b5 here first. Uh, but again, as far as I remember, castling, simple castling is possible. A queen to c7 is possible here as well. So something like that. That is another idea of playing it. But uh, bishop to d7, okay. At very least, I achieved what I wanted. So I just grabbed the bishop. After bishop to e3, uh, so exactly here, black played bishop g7. Uh, so it is the moment where it's why Jose X suggested castling. Um, castling. My goodness, it, it, it can't be good. So, how to punish black for this? Probably I can do this by simple means. I mean, bishop to e2 covering g4 and d1, then simply casting short. And then playing something like knight to b5 with a decisive attack. It is the one possibility. Another possibility is probably just to play uh, bishop to b5 right now pinning the knight and creating this threat of taking on c6 and then taking on a7. Uh, and if a6, uh, first of all, my bishop isn't hanging, I guess. So I can probably try rook to d1 here to start with. Maybe bishop b6 is also a good idea. Um, bishop takes a6 deserves attention. I don't know, so many different opportunities to, to, to win this. <laughs> I'm not sure which one is better. Mm, okay, let's say rook to d1. Isn't it winning? I mean, a b5 is lost because of queen a8 check. If queen goes to c7. Uh, no, it's probably not winning. Okay, maybe bishop b5 doesn't win. So yeah, I guess bishop e2 castles and just decides to attack. That's the idea. All right. So... Um, because look, <laughs> I mean, this pawns looks so vulnerable. A7 and B7. My queen on A4 is super aggressive. And I have a pair of bishops. I mean, uh, uh, just imagine my bishop somewhere on F3. And this one is on E3. And I have this both guys attacking here. No, can't be good. Can't be good for black, for sure. All right, so bishop g7, I just played rook to d1, uh, queen to c7. Maybe mid queen to c8 was slightly more accurate, although looking a bit ugly, but uh, uh, still. I think giving me a chance to play knight b5 wasn't that smart. Mm, here, queen to c8 and knight to a7. Okay, so um, I considered also rook takes a7, bishop a7, queen a8, but in this case, bishop to b5. All right, so you can't win the material with the help of this maneuver. The queen takes, queen takes on a7, the knight is pinned. And if you castle, I just go away with the bishop, maybe on b6. My queen is protected now. That's the idea. So I'm still winning the material. All right, so here, most likely, the best chance was just to bring the queen somewhere to the active position, maybe to f5 or something. But black's problem is that uh, almost everywhere where the queen goes, I can continue attacking it with my bishop, so I can... Put my bishop on d3 now. I can also bring it to b5, just pinning the knight. And next move, just taking it on c6 and then taking with the queen. For example, this way, like bishop b5, and if castles, I just take here, takes, and take with the queen. Um, so as we may notice, I have everything protected all of a sudden. So knight on a7 is protected by the bishop. These pawns are protected by my queen. And c8 square is controlled by my knight. 
so there is no chance to attack me or something like that. But still, there was the best chance for black. I mean, there are some ideas connected with knight to g4 and so forth. So most likely this rook takes a7 was just a decisive mistake because after that I have just uh, decisive material advantage and no compensation. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go further and play uh, probably one more game and uh, it will be uh, the last one for today. Uh, let us play Acris. And white pieces again. Okay, here we go. French. How to attack in French? Uh, plenty of different options. Plenty of different options to attack in French defense. So let's uh, keep on playing something I usually do. Grabbing the bishop. I know that queen g4 is the main line, but I prefer a4. It's like a combination of uh, positional and attacking play. So I have a pair of bishops. I'm not in a rush. So I'm kind of developing attack here. And c4 is probably already a mistake. So uh, black no longer exerts pressure in the center, which actually gives me uh, just a freedom of different operations on the king side now. So how to attack this position? So first I think we should uh, bring the pawn to h5 to grab the space or maybe potentially uh, we can dark squares there with the h6. Depends on uh, Black's reply now. And uh, actually, I expected something like bishop d7 instead of knight c6. I think it was a logical follow up of playing c4, just attacking this a4. Although Black probably can't take it in the vast majority of cases, but still, it was interesting. All right, so this gives me a chance to play h6, and I think I will play h6 without much thinking because, look, like, these dark squares are completely weak now. So let's bring the knight to f6, or maybe to g5 to know which one is better. Both squares look very, very attractive. Let's play knight to g5 to know. What's interesting here, in some cases, I can even consider taking on c4 and bringing the knight to e4, but wow, this will be too too crazy, I think. Too much. Too much. Oh, knight to d8, super passive. I, I'm not sure what is the idea behind this. So protecting the pawn this way, black prevents himself from uh, castling long. I have a feeling that I can bring my queen to f6 even. So what about this? Queen f3 with the idea of queen f6 and then grabbing that pawn on h7. Should be winning for white simply. Too many weaknesses and no counterplay. Just dark squares. As simple as that. Queen f6 attacking the rook. What to do? Rook somewhere, I just take on h7. And then my knight finally gets to f6. That was my goal since I saw that pawn on g6 already. And my pawn h6 will be just queened very soon, I think. Takes extra pawn. And this pawn is super important. Um, there are some ideas connected with queen g7 even in such a situation. I don't think I need it. <laughs> I don't think I need all these complications. 
but just nice, nice thing to consider. Okay, let's start with the g4. Anyway, I wanted to make this move, attacking the knight and most likely forcing it back to e7 because I can't see any other square, unless black decides to take on h6. And after knight e7, I think it makes sense for me to consider queen to g7. It may lead to a very nice win with the checkmate somewhere. So knight to e7, all right, queen g7, rook takes. Knight to f6 check, king f8. All right, it's too complicated, we'll uh, think of that only if knight goes back to e7, but knight takes on d4, all right, I just take. Now it's absolutely lost, of course absolutely lost c3 doesn't change the situation i'll just bring my bishop to attack yep uh black resigned because it's absolutely lost all right so First of all, c4 is just too early. Instead of closing the center this way, uh, you should have uh, played knight to c6, so exerting pressure. So it's really important to uh, create some pressure in the center. Otherwise, white just starts this very simple attack uh, on the king side. And uh, even if you stop me from that, so I have a freedom of um, actually, um, freedom of uh, maneuvering there. Since the center is closed, it's just, uh, well, much easier for me to focus on that attack, right? Uh, I'm not distracted by this play. So uh, c4 is the first inaccuracy, in my opinion. So now just h4. I guess uh, the best try for black here is to stop me uh, from playing that by playing h5. Okay, this pawn anyway becomes uh, quite uh, vulnerable after bishop e2. I still force you to play g6, weakening in these dark squares. I can potentially use this h5 with the help of g4. So it's anyway very, very hard for black to survive it, but uh, it's better than, uh, well, in the game when my pawn was on h6, okay? So knight to c6, all right, h5. Again, I think h6 is better than uh, giving the chance to play h6 because at least, well, for some time, um, you keep your dark squares. After that, well, I think it's just positionally lost. Uh, bishop d7, knight g5. That was probably not the best way for white to exploit it. Maybe it was better to start with queen f3 and queen f6 maneuver, in fact. Because after knight g5, you could have castled. And uh, I didn't see the clear way of winning this, at least right now. But maybe still this queen f3 is very, very annoying. Because I have a threat of queen f6, in fact. Mm, but now we have some tricks like this. So if I take, you play e5, sort of. But no, it doesn't work either, so just lost just lost anyway all right so um yeah really hard to play this so just uh my pieces are just coming that that's the thing uh, through dark squares all right here i took you played knight f5 g4 i was curious if there was a chance after knight e7 to play queen g7 so something very typical something very typical for these positions uh let's have a look at this this looks interesting so now check with the knight king goes to f8 only move now say, I have two interesting ideas of playing h7 and taking on g7. Let's start with this. King takes g7, only move. Now just bishop h6, right? Uh, forcing the king to h8, only move. And bishop to f8 checkmate. Yeah, there was possible to play queen g7. Brilliant. <laughs> but also very, very typical. So I saw this uh, combination many times. So queen g7, what to play? There is no move, in fact, because there is a threat of uh, knight to f6 already. Uh, just with the checkmate. And if king goes here, then I just play knight f6 and grab the rook. Yeah, queen g7 just wins on the spot here. That's why probably my opponent decided to take on uh, e4, because there is no defense, right? So rook g7, knight to f6, check, takes, check, again, yeah, only move and bishop f8, checkmate. That's it. Very nice finish, very nice finish of this session, I guess. So I was aggressive, I was trying to attack you in each and every game with both colors. Hopefully it was instructive. Hopefully you learned something new from this. Uh, many thanks for super chats. Many thanks for your uh, kind support. Uh, many thanks for this great conversation. Uh, great chat today, for sure. One of the best ones. If we uh, uh, actually think of recent uh, episodes of recent uh, sessions. 
Um, as for my uh, further streams, so tomorrow there will be the one on uh, my Twitch channel. So you can, by the way, find the link to my Twitch channel as well here below. Uh, the best way to be notified about uh, upcoming live streams of mine is to be uh, my Twitter follower. So I am at Master Ostrowski on Twitter, again, here below. And also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to improve your chess. Wish you all the best uh, during this uh, uh, last hours of uh, Sunday and all the best for uh, this upcoming working week. See you very, very soon. Bye-bye.